Hi, welcome once again to Senior Focus. I'm your host, Bill Adams. Senior Focus comes to you a couple times each month through Armstrong's Channel 20 and 100. And uh, thank you to Greg Roten from Armstrong Cable for uh, getting us on the air. Um, also, uh, we want to thank Keith Kaiser because we come to you from the Mill Creek uh, Metro Parks uh, Davis Center. And if you have a chance, come out here. It's really beautiful this time of year with the flowers and the, and the gardens. Um, we also want to let you know that uh, the show is on, on demand, uh, and if you happen to miss parts of it. And eventually, you could check us out on YouTube. And one last plug is uh, we have a Facebook page also. You can just type in the uh, word Senior Focus TV on Facebook. And today we're going to talk about the Lifelong Learning Institute, which is through Park Vista. And we have three guests with us today. Uh, to my immediate left is Maurice Seyun. She is the director of the Lifelong Learning Institute. And to her left is Jay Harris. She's a resident at Park Vista and has been very instrumental in helping the campaign to uh, get the institute started and continuing and expanding. And we have the campaign director, Lori Shandor, She's on the far right as you watch. Lori, uh, again, is uh, going to be here to tell, uh, talk about how uh, the community can help support uh, the Lifelong Learning Institute. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, why don't we start off, Maurice, with <coughs> just a, a basic uh, summary of what is the Lifelong Learning Institute um, and you know, what the history of it is. Sure. Um, well, through many conversations and feedback from residents and community members, about four years ago, we decided that there was a need for intellectual wellness at Park Vista. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that um, creating the institute would be a good idea for the community as well as our residents. And um, we started the institute, and it has really grown in the past four years, especially this past year. Mm -hmm. um, it is open to all residents. Usually we focus on people who are 50 and over. Okay, um, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. And um, we bring speakers from all over, whether they're local or all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, most of our programs will cover one of the four pillars, uh, okay. arts and culture, mm -hmm. history and political science, religion and spirituality, and wellness and rehab. Mm -hmm. And... Um, our speakers come in, talk for a few hours, and then our participants go home and they don't have homework or <laughs> exams or anything else. No, no that, tests? No, oh, not at all. That's the kind of school that I'd like to go, <laughs> go to. <laughs> Me too. Um, and and uh, this is, uh, again, this is an idea, uh, I guess it's uh, developed throughout the country, but this is fairly new to the Mahoning Valley, right? I mean, absolutely. This is the last five years. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And what we did when we started the program is we benchmarked several of the large um, lifelong learning institutes in America, such as Chautauqua and Osher sure. um, and Elder Hostel, mm -hmm. um, which is now known as Road Scholars. And um, that's how we kind of came about how we would set up the program. Mm -hmm. um, and you have, uh, well, we have one of the pillars of the, the four pillars. We talk, you talked about arts and culture, but the, the second pillar you have is history and political science. Mm -hmm. And Jay, that's kind of your uh, bailiwick, yes. I guess. Yes. Uh, do you want to talk about how that got started, how you work with that? Uh, well, it just happened, really, uh, with the people behind it inviting my favorite uh, professor, uh, Dr. Farrow, from uh, State college uh, in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and he just talks uh, voluminously mm -hmm. about any topic and no notes, and he is, nobody goes to sleep, I'll guarantee you, <laughs> and his insights into uh, Constitution, Supreme Court, uh, particular uh, uh, presidents, mm -hmm. he hi has highlighted some of them, and uh, but particularly right now he's really on to the Constitution and all the things that uh, they have on their schedules for this year, mm -hmm. and he gave us a copy of all those, and he says, and listen to your television and radio and put down what they come up with, mm -hmm. and he gave us a, a, a little test, four tests, 
that how do you think they will come up, mm -hmm. what answers they will have, and we'll find out how we <laughs> come yeah. up with the uh, Supreme Court. And uh, everybody was taking notes and mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing and thoroughly enjoying him. Mm -hmm. he's, he's funny, he's extremely informative, and things that we hadn't, maybe we had gone over when we were in school, Right. But not like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. He is marvelous. Well, that sounds like something I'd be interested in. We were talking before the show, my background's in political science, and I have a law degree, so I've taken constitutional law, but many years ago. And I would imagine that's part of uh, what's so great about this is it just sort of rekindles people's interest in learning mm -hmm. from, you know, maybe they were in school years or decades ago. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, Lori, would you want to talk about the campaign and some of the work that you're doing? Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, like Marie said, the Institute started four years ago, but in particularly in the last year, we've really seen uh, a lot of interest and growth starting to happen. Mm -hmm. So the foundation, the Ohio Presbyterian Retirement Services Foundation, which is uh, part of Park Vista, mm -hmm. um, we kind of started to look at it and say, boy, you know, there's some growth possibility here. And what we're working to do is to raise a million dollars. $600,000 of that would be to build a specific classroom on the Park Vista for the Institute. Mm -hmm. So this would be a dedicated space where these classes could happen. Um, right now, most of the classes happen in the gathering room, which is what I kind of refer to as the life hub of Park Vista. It's where sure. everything happens. Mm -hmm. But that causes a lot of scheduling conflicts when we have board meetings and exercise classes and right. yeah. lunches and you name it, it happens in the gathering room. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to schedule around all of those to get our, our uh, classes for the Institute in that gathering room. Mm -hmm. This will give us a 24 by 36 classroom dedicated to the Institute. Um, the second part of it is a $400,000 goal for endowment. Um, and that will provide us with funding for the life of the Institute. Um, to help pay for speaker fees, to help pay for salaries for um, the staff of the Institute, such as Maurice. Mm -hmm. um, it'll help us to expand and grow. And also, most of our sessions are free of charge. Oh. So <laughs> when you know we're providing this free of charge, mm -hmm. the endowment will help to offset the costs to Park Vista. Sure. Um, the only time we charge is when um, it's a really high caliber speaker that's a, a large fee, or if mm -hmm. we provide lunch if it's an all-day session. And mm -hmm. then usually the fee is about $5. Sure. So this endowment will help Park Vista to offset those costs and continue to provide this not only to our residents, but to the community. Mm -hmm. um, things have been going great. We're at 80% of our million dollar goal. Oh, already? Already. <laughs> okay. Yes. So um, we mm -hmm. are looking to raise this last $200,000. Um, and then hopefully kick off some construction and keep things moving forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, we're going to be uh, uh, talking about and actually showing some of the institute, uh, the video that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, we just want to, I just want to ask about your partners in this. You have some other community partners. Do you want to sure. talk about them? Sure. Um, this past December, although we stand strong alone as an institute, we decided that it would be great to collaborate with a couple of organizations. Mm -hmm. And so we partnered up with Youngstown State University, the Mahoning Valley Historical Society, and the Public Library of Youngstown and Mahoning Valley. And with that collaboration, we're bringing programs together that we may have not been able to bring on our own. Mm -hmm. And so we're really excited about what we have planned for the fall and the future with them. Yeah. Sure. It's been great, and it's a great way for us to ensure that we're not duplicating programs. That when speakers and things are coming into the area, we're working with these three partners to reach out to all of our audiences and to really maximize on what the potential is for these learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, Youngstown has a, a Youngstown State, uh, is it Dr. Chordish, or who, uh, who's the director of the uh, Learning Institute. Well, not, yeah. It's not called the Learning Institute. Theirs is called the Institute of Learning and Retirement. That's what it and is. And Mel <laughs> okay. Melvin North is the director. Okay. okay. And we've been working with him very closely as we've developed our schedules for the next semesters, both mm -hmm. theirs and ours, right. uh, and looking for ways that we can collaborate with speakers, with topics, with all types of different things. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then Heidi Daniel was on from the library last uh, about a year ago, mm -hmm. and I know they've they have all kind of uh, uh, speakers throughout the year. So that's, again, it's a great partnership and Bill Lawson, I guess, over at the Mahoning Valley Historical Society. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're opening up their new um, 
location or mm -hmm. they've already opened. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, activity, I guess, in the downtown Youngstown area. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, why don't at this point we uh, uh, show the video that you have, mm -hmm. and this will describe. You want to talk just set up what the video is going to show or a little bit about it? Sure. We put together this video for uh, a five-minute way to explain the Institute to the community mm -hmm. uh, and let folks know that this opportunity is there. Um, while it's a great service for our residents, we want to make sure that everybody's taking advantage. So this shows a little bit about the community's support. You'll see faces that you know, such as Dr. David Sweet, uh, former president at Youngstown State, uh, Heidi Daniels that you mentioned, and maybe a few other faces that you'll recognize in this video talking about the importance of this type of institute right here in the Mahoney Valley. Sure. Okay. We'll watch that now. I think it's important that a community provide opportunities for seniors to engage and remain intellectually active. I think anytime you can inspire people to learn uh, about a new topic, you're enriching people's lives and inspiring them, and I think that that's what's important for people of all ages. We have a lot of uh, older Americans living in the valley now, and they're very active. During the time I was here in Youngstown, I got the opportunity to experience the, the talent and the experience of the management team at Park Vista. And as a result, I have great confidence in their ability to lead uh, the Institute uh, and uh, make it highly successful. Mahoney Valley Lifelong Learning Institute is a little bit different. We serve a segment of the population that are older adults, older adults uh, in the range of 50 years and plus. This program will be both for fun and academically challenging. Uh, we plan on engaging the audience uh, with the different lectures. When uh, participants attend a session, they will be with their peers and in an area that is accessible and learning about things that have been proven to be of specific interest to that age group. So the curriculum will be based on the four pillars, arts and culture, history and political science, religion and spirituality, and wellness and rehab. There's such a wide array of interests in our community, and uh, in Mahoney Valley in particular, people's interests really stretch the uh, you know, spectrum of what they might want to see. So it's great to be able to look at different types of speakers, whether they be historical in nature, whether they be literary in nature, or if we're talking about technology classes for older adults. Technology will be a large component of this program. Uh, we plan on live streaming lectures from around the U.S. and even the world. Um, we also plan on having headphones in order for the hearing impaired to be able to hear the lectures. It clearly is a unique opportunity to increase uh, educational opportunities here in the Valley. The library did a survey not that long ago for our strategic planning and we found that one of the number one requests that we got from what kinds of programs and services people would like to see is uh, more programs for people in the 50 and up demographics. I definitely think there's a need. Uh, my husband and I for many years have taken advantage of the offerings up at the Chautauqua Institute in New York. We know many others in this area do as well. So I think having the Institute here is going to attract a lot of attention. Many of them are college graduates, uh, have lived successful lives, uh, they uh, travel extensively. They are looking for things to do. Having gone through the process of planning for retirement, I know it's important to identify those activities and undertakings that uh, you'll hope will keep you busy. Uh, in the future, and I know that the Lifelong Learning Institute will provide just that for seniors and future seniors. As we really grow the program, we're going to bring in more national and regional speakers and presenters, and with the partnerships that develop, we're going to be able to collaborate to even grow bigger programming. Uh, the, in a direction that really none of us have really thought about before. We have a list of partners already. We plan on um, working with these partners in the community 
in order to partner up and bring better speakers that we may not be able to bring on our own. Um, also use their locations for learning purposes. I think it's an asset to the community because we have a lot of great museums, we have great parks, we have a great symphony, we have a great community band. Partnering with Youngstown State University, I'm very excited because uh, having been at the university for a number of years, this clearly will be a game changer for the Valley, for both of our institutions and as well as for older Americans. Well, the library is excited to become a partner with this because we, uh, as our mission, promote lifelong learning and we try to connect uh, people to resources to inspire them to be lifelong learners and to enrich their lives. And so the idea of partnering on programmatic aspects of a lifelong learning institute was very exciting to us because it gives us another way for us to fulfill our mission as well. The most important thing I think any of us as individuals can do is support the program financially to make sure the program is sustained and to make sure that the programming is quality. We plan on continuing the success with additions. Um, we have a million dollar campaign that we are working on in order to make a small addition. We need to work with the foundation for uh, donations in the area of our lectures, the arts and culture, history and political science, religion and spirituality, and wellness and rehabilitation. That will help in the sustainability of our programs, keep it affordable and accessible for older adults throughout the, the, uh, the valley. I think that we have the resources to be able to really develop a great program for older adults. It's uh, very exciting to see the growing demand for education in the Valley. I'm looking forward to participating in some of the programs that are offered down here. The potential down the road is incredible and I think it will be something that will be a great outreach for Park Vista as well as something that will benefit the Valley. Okay, we're back, and I was just going to uh, talk with Jay. Uh, Jay Harris is uh, at Park Vista as a resident, and she has, you've attended quite a few of the uh, classes. Yes, mm -hmm. and enjoy them very much. Uh, there is a group, and I don't know where they are from, both of you may know, but there are people that are actors and actress or actresses mm -hmm. that take the part of famous people. Okay. And we've had, uh, 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 President Garfield, we've had uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. and Eleanor Roosevelt also did it again, uh, meeting, who was it? Uh, Just recently. Um, the other, uh, another president's wife. Another and I, first lady. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, you were right there with them. It was mm -hmm. a current uh, conversation. They do such a good job. And everybody in, thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And we learned things that we had never heard before, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, particularly the other presidents, we learned things that weren't in newspapers. And this was real history. Right. And also the, the uh, what these things portend for the future. Mm -hmm. And each thing, uh, including the constitutional things that are going on, what it provides possibly for the future. Yeah, I guess how history can teach us about the current times and, and what we're going through. It, it sounds like, and again, I, I'm, I'm confessing that I'm a, a C-SPAN fan, <laughs> but it sounds almost like what they do uh, on, on C-SPAN, on TV, where they have book, well, it used to be book notes, but they, and then they'd also have, they had the Lincoln-Douglas debates where they had the actors portraying um, but that would be very interesting. Uh, you mentioned Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, I know locally uh, in Canton, they have the First Ladies Museum. Right. And so, the, in effect, uh, you're sort of bringing that museum in living color to uh, Park Vista. Right, absolutely. Yeah. It's actually a group called We Made History. Okay. And Lucretia Garfield was the, um, uh, the other yes. First the other, Lady. The other one. Right, and they did a fabulous job. Just the way they bring the characters to life, you feel like you're 
literally sitting in the room with them talking to them. They mm -hmm. were having a tea together. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but if people were interested, and again, this is open to the community at large, how would they get a hold of uh, the Institute? Uh, what's the, maybe the phone number and maybe the uh, uh, website? Absolutely. The website is www.mvlli.org. And the phone number, uh, you can reach us at Park Vista. Phone number is 330-746-2944. And just ask for Maurice, myself, um, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Um, we also are always looking for feedback as well so that we can uh, plan for the future. Again, the, the website is MVLLI, and again, that's for Mahoning Valley Lifelong Learning Institute, mm -hmm. <laughs> dot org. Um, and it, you want to talk about some of the other uh, classes. Again, you, you have a four, sort of a four-part uh, series. It's arts and culture. Uh, we've talked about history and political science. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's religion and spirituality and wellness and rehabilitation. What are some of the, uh, maybe some of the other, or maybe the upcoming classes in some of those? Sure. Hmm. Um, in the fall, we have a lot of really exciting programs scheduled, things we haven't done in the past. For example, we have an art series. We're going to have our uh, participants come in and create art. And then those uh, pieces of art are going to be showcased in an art show oh, and judged. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting for our residents and our community members. Um, we also have um, what's called a program called Drums Alive. I don't know if you've heard of that. I think, but um, the, you could describe that. What is that? But it's a really interactive um, way. It's, it's, it's fun and it's good. Uh, it helps your memory, actually. Um, Participants will have a drum, okay. and they will be able to um, play to the music. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's really fun for uh, those who are 15 older. They, from what I hear, it's a really fun activity for them. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking to have possibly yoga um, this this fall, um, specifically Tai Chi Chi. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that that's more slower, uh, but more. <laughs> Controlled movement. Yeah. Yes, it's mm -hmm. a it's a, about 19 movements, and it can be done from your chair. So you oh, don't good. actually have to be phys physically active, um, which helps a lot of people who are wheelchair bound or unable to um, to stand for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've done um, through the religion and spirituality pillar, we have brought in a speaker from the theological college in Pittsburgh. And we did that session as a two-part session. It was done a morning session specifically for clergy and the community. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was a lunch and then an afternoon session open to the public. So both residents and uh, community members were then invited to that. And m many of the clergy members actually stayed for the second lecture as well. And it was really interesting hearing this um, speaker from the theological school talking about um, religion and spirituality and, and all of the you know, the pieces that came into that, but then having the open discussion with the community members, the residents at Park Vista, and the clergy that was in the audience as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing about a lot of these sessions, and I think Jake can attest to this, they're very interactive. Yes. And that's what most of our speakers comment on. Many of our speakers are college professors. Right. And they're used to being in a room with college students mm -hmm. who are staring at their cell phones <laughs> the whole day. Whereas yeah. this is more interactive and the, the attendees want to talk about what the, the speaker is talking about, want to comment. When you get into the history, you know, raise a hand, I was there, I remember when this happened, right. or that's not how I remember this happening, and, and a lot of open conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, my, uh, he's not my late uncle, but my uncle Andy, uh, he would uh, go, because my, my um, uh, cousin was uh, in the Youngstown State History Department, Mm -hmm. And so she would occasionally have him accompany her to some of the lectures and things. And he would raise his hand and he would say, no, I, I, I think you might be wrong on that. So <laughs> I think that would be interesting, again, for mm -hmm. the professors, the speakers, Absolutely. to get that uh, perspective from people who have, yeah. you know, they, they may not have been become a PhD in the subject, but they mm -hmm. learn, you know, they live mm -hmm. through certain things. Yeah. Um, and, and what you described, Jay, about... Um, 
you know, get, uh, again, giving your uh, input into, you know, how do you think the Supreme Court will rule on this? And, you know, it's very interesting. And it is surprising. And, and, of course, they have come up with some real things just recently that we never thought they would. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's going to be real discussion in the fall when he comes back <laughs> on, on some of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, following up on yeah, the past. Um, and also, uh, you talked about, uh, Maurice, you talked about the uh, art uh, uh, coming up, I mm -hmm. think. And uh, Jay, are you going to participate in that? Because I understand you're also an artist. I would like to, yes. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, why don't we talk, uh, we have a few minutes to go. Why don't we talk uh, generally about Park Vista, uh, and some other you know, information again. Um, do you know how many people are living on campus o overall? Any idea? Uh, we have about 200, uh, I believe about 250 residents overall, okay. and that's through our full continuum of care. So Park sure. Vista offers services from independent, both apartments and villas, all the way through hospice, and that includes nursing and memory care. So through all those units, um, okay. we have about that, about that many folks living on campus right now, and it's a great place to live. I'm... Pretty much everything you need is right there under one roof. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go through the salon. Uh, we have a little knick-knack store where you can pick up some things. Um, we used to have a bank on campus. Uh, we, do, we no longer have our bank on campus, but we make regular trips to the bank uh, mm -hmm. with our bus. So there's also, for folks who don't drive, plenty of opportunity to get out to grocery stores, um, to the bank, to places that they need to go. And, uh, you know, of course, you're right next to Stambaugh Auditorium, yes. which uh, for those who are at least mobile, you know, who can get out, that's a great opportunity also. Yes, we uh, get in on the Thursday night uh, last dress rehearsal. Yes. Oh, is and that we right? we get in free. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it's, that. It's, <laughs> it's a great treat for the residents to go and, and catch that dress yeah. rehearsal, kind of mm -hmm. get to see what's happening at Stambaugh prior to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Including football games at, at the stadium, of course. Sure, yeah, you're right there, too, yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take the bus down there for that as well. Okay. And, of course, I can't uh, go further without mentioning the uh, Symphony Center. Mm -hmm. And we have this marvelous Youngstown Symphony that is just uh, terrific. And so we get uh, season tickets or single tickets to both classic and pops. Mm -hmm. And we just have a marvelous season. Uh, I have one last question. And, and uh, do you see uh, some, I guess, physical benefits from the lifelong learning? I mean, is this, you know, I, I would think it, it also improves you know, the disposition of people, maybe less depression of folks. Right. They, they, you know. Studies have shown that um, lifelong learning helps your mental and physical wellness. Mm -hmm. And um, you can just see it on, on people's faces when they're in these um, sessions. They're so engaged and they're learning and their minds are working and um, they're staying active because of the wellness uh, portion of our programs. And uh, not only that, but a lot of these uh, folks don't have... Um, an avenue to socialize and to talk to others like themselves who sure. may be in the same situation. So it's a great opportunity to come out and meet people and socialize with those who have much in common. Mm -hmm. Well, we've run out of time, but I want to thank Maurice uh, Seyun, who's the director at the Lifelong Learning Institute at Park Vista. Also, Jay Harris, thank you for coming. And uh, finally, Lori Shandor. And if you want to learn more, you can go to 330-746-2944. You can contact them uh, or uh, mvlli.org online. Again, you're watching Senior Focus. We come to you a couple times each month uh, on Channel 20. Thanks to Greg Roden and thanks to Keith Kaiser for allowing us to use the beautiful Davis Visitor Center. Until next time, thanks for watching.